Now before we get into making this spicy garlic confit chaos Caesar that I serve at my Sunday suppers, we need to get started on that garlic confit first. So let's just jump right into it. Now when I'm separating garlic heads, I like to rip off the paper into a bowl so it just doesn't get all over the place. And then I can just take a little paring knife and then cut that root end off and then just rip the paper. And then you can easily go through and remove the garlic cloves from the paper. If one garlic clove happens to be much bigger than the rest of them, just give it a cut in half. And then we wanna get all the garlic into a small pot. And we wanna take a cheap olive oil and add enough to submerge the garlic cloves. Then we we want to get the garlic cloves onto the stove bring that oil up to a simmer until you start to see bubbling action in the oil itself once you see that happening then transfer it into a 225 degree oven for one hour you want it to cook nice and slow and gently keeping that same gentle bubble action going throughout the entire hour and then after an hour once they're roasty they're sweetened and now they're completely softened we want to strain the garlic cloves from the garlic oil save the garlic oil for later let that oil cool and then we can get into making the dressing. So here we have all of the ingredients to make our spicy Calabrian chili garlic confit Caesar dressing. It's definitely more complicated than the original Caesar dressing, which we have covered on this show before, and I will leave linked down in the description if you want a more straightforward approach. But this dressing packs in the flavor. And to make it, we're gonna take the technique we've used in our mayo recipe to make it all in a quart container and using an immersion blender. Now, before you get started, you want to make sure that oil has cooled down. If it's hot, you don't want to make this yet. Now, before we go any further, we need to talk about hydration thanks to our sponsor today, Liquid IV. Liquid IV is an electrolyte drink mix designed to enhance the absorption of water and other key nutrients into the bloodstream to help keep you hydrated. Incredibly, drinking just one Liquid IV hydration multiplier hydrates faster and more effectively than water alone. Now, sometimes I get caught in an editing blackout and work just takes over my life and I simple things like drinking enough water kind of fall to the wayside and I get headaches and it prevents me from working at my peak. So I've been drinking liquid IV for the past few months just to try and get ahead of any bad habits that I get stuck in when work takes over. The product is powered by CTT, cellular transport technology, to help your body absorb the nutrients faster and being properly hydrated can also boost your immune system, aid in recovery, and help your body function at its best. And all these products are available at Costco. And if you want to try the hydration multiplier, liquid IV will send you this three-pack sample directly to your doorstep with the link down in the description. And if you use code NACS25 and the link down in the description, you'll get 25% off your whole order. So head on down to the link, get your order of liquid IV, stay hydrated, and let's jump back into the recipe. Now the dressing can also be made in a blender and I'll add those instructions in the recipe link down below. But this method starts by adding an egg yolk to the container along with a large clove of garlic grated in. Even with the garlic confit, this recipe still needs that hint of fresh garlic. Then we add the juice of half a lemon directly on top of the garlic to tame it a bit and to take the edge off. Next I add one anchovy. You won't taste it, but its presence will be felt. And then add the roasted garlic, a nice tablespoon of these chopped Calabrian chilies, tablespoon of Dijon mustard, tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, teaspoon of fish sauce, one tablespoon of white vinegar, and then add that garlic oil. It's gonna separate, which will help you measure it. I'm looking for the amount of oil to be equal to or slightly more than the rest of the ingredients, about a cup. And then add salt and pepper and then submerge the immersion blender into the bottom of the quart container and start blending. And you wanna sort of do this plunging action, like you're pumping it and it's gonna slowly pull the oil from above down into the mixture and create this stable emulsion that's gonna form fairly quickly. Now I've just got a little bit of water and I wanna just adjust the consistency slightly. I want it a little looser. I'm gonna add some of the Parmesan cheese, maybe two to three tablespoons. Now give it a taste and make any adjustments you need. A little bit of agave maybe, more lemon, more vinegar. And when it tastes good and it's thick but it's still flowy, set it aside and then get that garlic oil into a container for later. Now in the summertime, in the spring, you can find all sorts of amazing lettuces that you could turn into a Caesar. Traditionally you use a crisp romaine and that crisp crunchiness is sort of a key characteristic of it. And now it's the winter and it's hard to sort of find lettuces that are really good. Most of the lettuces on the East Coast come from the West Coast, so that's like three weeks of traveling before you're eating it at least. And since it's the winter, kale is in season, and if you get this nice Tuscan Italian kale, it's nice and crisp, but it's still tender. 
that I can eat it straight up. It's got a little bit of bitterness, but it also has sweetness. So to me, I use it as a lettuce all the time and I really like it. And when you cut it nice and thin, it makes it a nice salad. And that's what we're gonna do today. First, we need to get it washed. I'm just gonna wash in this. Some guy made a remark about how I take this out to uh, wash some lettuces, but it's like, I take it out so you can fit more stuff in it. And then I just use this as a wash bowl. Usually I'll kind of keep the stem on and just cut that, but I know a lot of people don't like it. So if you want to remove the stem, all you have to do is run it through your hands. No tools necessary. Don't buy a special gadget. So just go through and remove the stems or keep them. Whichever way you want to do is totally fine. Then give that lettuce a nice spin, get all that water off of it. Then you want to take the pieces of kale and sort of like you would a chiffon out of basil, get them bunched up tightly. And you can just go through and cut nice strips of them that are going to be easily forkable and also easy to chew and eat. All right, so now we've got our bowl of kale. We've got our dressing. Then you wanna take your Italian style breadsticks and with a knife, we just wanna kinda of cut these coins. It's gonna fall apart a little bit and we just want nice rustic coarse pieces. So then just take those coarse pieces, get those into a bowl and any of these really fine kind of crumbs, I'm just gonna save and add to my bread crumb bin. Then we're gonna have a small pan on medium high heat and then we wanna take that garlic oil that we reserved from earlier, get that into a pan and we really just wanna toast the breadcrumbs nicely until they're nice golden brown and crunchy. It's gonna have a nice flavor from that garlic oil and it's gonna add nice texture. And you're gonna get a little bit of those sesame seed flavors that's gonna add a little different element. Make sure they're seasoned and once they're brown, get them into a, a bowl with some paper towel to dry. We've got our croutons and we've got our cheese. We're ready to throw it all together. Now first off, I just wanna hit the lettuce with a little bit of lemon juice, not too much, and then just a little bit of salt because the Parmesan cheese is also gonna add a lot of salt and there's salt in here. So don't get too crazy, it's just a little layer. Then start with a few tablespoons of the dressing and get that worked in. You can always taste and then add more if needed later, but you don't wanna overdress it at first. Then we wanna go in with a few tablespoons of the Parmesan cheese and then about half of the sesame stick breadcrumbs. And with your hands, start to work the dressing into the kale. I gave it a taste and determined it needed a little bit more, so I added some. Now delicate lettuces would need a lighter dressing, but kale is hearty, so this thicker dressing is gonna be able to coat the kale nicely. Once it's well dressed, take your hands and you wanna build a really tall salad in the bowl. Salads look best when they're tall. Then we're gonna dot a little bit more of the Caesar dressing all around the salad so you get a little bit as you take bites. Then we're gonna add the rest of the sesame stick breadcrumbs and then the Parmesan cheese. And then of course, finish it with some fresh cracked black pepper Pepper, and you're ready to serve. It's a good looking salad to me, I don't know about you. My grandpa used to deliver sesame rolls, some Italian bread, and he would always have it in his car and I would smell that sesame smell all the time. And the sesame stick breadsticks just bring that back. They add crunch, it adds a little bit of a different flavor than you're used to with a normal crouton. It all goes together really well and I think it's a nice switch up on a regular Caesar. This recipe and more are gonna be linked down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Now this recipe is the salad I serve at my Sunday supper pop-ups in New York City. And if you wanna learn the story behind it, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video right up on the screen right now. There's also a few others in case you wanna try another recipe.